Rich Dubrow, if you can lead us off. Hey, hey Chris. Hey, Rich. Uh, how, how, how's, your, how's your health? How, is, uh, how, how are your knees? How is the rest of you? Thank, thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> they're good. Um, they're good, both of them. Uh, I feel really good. I did a lot of work this offseason um, with a th physical therapist in um, Arlington, Texas, at, uh, at Dr. Keith Meister's Institute. Um, and I, I feel really good. I do. Um, definitely not any younger, but um, my legs feel better than I thought they would at this point. John Mioli, you're up. How's it going, Chris? Last time we spoke, you had some questions about the direction of this rebuild and where the team was going and what the plan was. Did you seek out any answers to that, or did anyone seek you out to kind of have a conversation about what that was? And can, if so, can you share what was shared? Um, I would never share an, a conversation like that um, if it was a private private conversation. Uh, I think the, the the questions that I had have been answered here the first few days. Um, I trust what Mike is doing. I, I trust what um, what our ownership wants to do uh, moving forward. And I think that we have the guys in the clubhouse um, to turn this thing around. Do I know the time frame of that? I don't. But um, I know that as long as I'm here, uh, I'm going to do everything that I can to pour into those guys, to be there for those guys, and, and kind of give them an idea of, um, of what winning baseball was like in Baltimore and what it can be like in the future. Dan Connolly, you're up. Hey, Chris. Um, hey, Dan. Basically, you know, you since 2011, since you joined this team, um, you've been a starter and you've always prepared in, in the spring training as such. Uh, both Brandon Hyde and Mike Elias said this winter that you're going to have to compete for at bats. Um, and that's something that I mean, I know you, you feel like you compete, but that's something you never really had to do with the Orioles before. Um, so what's your mindset there? And, and what did you think when, you know, when they told you that? Well, I had to compete for bats in 2012. I mean, when I was traded over here in 11, um, at the deadline, I was playing third base, a little bit of first base. And and really, that's um, – I feel like every year of my career, I've approached spring training um, to compete for bats. Uh, that's really how I think um, any player should approach it. Because if you just come in thinking that it's your job and you don't have to do anything, you're not doing yourself or, or anybody in the clubhouse any favors. And um, that's the way I've approached this offseason um, and, and this – this coming spring training, I, I'm going to continue to do the same thing. I'm going to push guys around me. Um, I'm going to push Trey at first, um, whoever else is over there, um, and they're going to push me back. And that's how you find out um, who your best guys are. And uh, and I have no doubt in my mind that we're going to have the best nine out there, and, and you're going to see a lot of familiar faces. Stan Charles, you're up. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. You look great. Thank you. Um, just a question. Your agent a couple of years ago made the point that what's happened to a lot of left-handed power hitting pull guys was affected by the advent of how much shifting is going on. Do you, do you agree with Scott on that? And is that a, not an excuse, but sort of, does it wrap up what sort of happened to you and some of the times that your batting average is frustratingly low it might have helped spiral some of this. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And, and it's not an excuse by any means. They're, the bunt was always there. Um, I felt early on in my career um, and early on in my contract that I was being paid to produce runs. Um, I was being paid to, to be the guy to drive in the runs. I was not being paid to lay the bunts down and steal bases. That dynamic changed very quickly. And um, I don't know if you all remember the, the 2018 season. I, I let off for a few games and – was trying to do something a little bit different and a little bit more dy dynamic. And it's just not who I am. Um, now, that being said, I'm the one who has to look myself in the mirror every night and, and really um, um, kind of go to war with myself over the way I chose to handle the situation. If I could go back and do it over, I probably would have done some things differently. But unfortunately, there's no blueprint for this. And um, for me, the, the main thing now is to, to, to focus on what I, I can, focus on the future and do everything I can um, like I said, to help this next wave of guys um, really get into their potential and, and, and put the club in the best position to win. Mark Viviano, you're up. How are you doing, Chris? Good to see you. What's up, Mark? Uh, kind of a simple question, I guess. As you just kind of laid out the changing circumstances over your career here as an Oriole, simple question. Are you having fun being a big leaguer? Has that changed 
and has the pandemic and its conditions affected that too? Um, both of those are really good questions. Uh, yes, I am having fun. Um, I think it's taken me several years to realize um, how much fun this game can be because I was so hard on myself because I expected so much out of myself. And I, I felt like I let a lot of people down, not to mention, um, you know, myself, but um, I, I felt like I was letting our fans down. I mean, that was, that was a big deal to me and it, it took a lot, um, it took a lot out of me, but um, I think honestly, the pandemic has really helped me realize um, how much, our fan base has supported me and how, how much I miss playing in front of our fans and really um, what it's all about. And, and so for me, I've been able to draw a lot of positives out of this, um, but it, it hasn't been easy. And, and I, I will continue to, to, to look at the brighter side of things and, and try to, to draw more positives um, out of the future. But it's, um, you know, every, every time you make a decision, um, there's consequences, you know, and it's some unfortunately are, uh, are bigger than others. And um, like I said, if I could go back and do some things differently, I probably would have, but um, there's no use in trying to change the past. Jerry Coleman, you're up. Hey, Chris, uh, appreciate it. Um, wanted to see if you uh, went through any different type of you know, routine during the off season, any changes you may have made and, and talk about how you handled your business? No, I did everything exactly the same as I've done every year. Um, I'm joking. That's a joke. Yeah, we, I, we still joke around here. Um, I did some things differently. You'll see it. It'll be um, visible to the naked eye. Uh, I'm excited about it. I, I think there are um, a lot of really positive things going on around here. And, and I feel like I have done um, substantial work to, to really step outside of my comfort zone and, and change some things. I mean, mechanically, um, physically change some things about how I'm, I'm approaching my bats. And uh, it's gonna be weird, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but I think, um, I think it's overdue to say the least. Steve Can you Malik. expand? Are you able to expand on that? As far as? Well, maybe a hint as to what we'll see, or is it like a... a no, you're going to have to tune in and watch the games. I'm not going to give everything away right now. Steve Molesky, you're up. Chris, along those lines, the struggles of the recent years, was it hard not to have self-doubts? Did you ever think it's not here anymore and what gives you hope now that it still is yes I did I mean there were times um and I feel like it's completely normal and and completely human to have those doubts when you're struggling and as struggling as long as I did but I think really honestly for me last spring um was a an eye opener and it was a okay I can still do this and um I was frustrated with the way things played out last season to say the least um, I felt like I came into spring training in great shape. Um, I, I was really swinging the bat well, and then, you know, everything stopped. So, um, but um, I also understand that we did get a chance to play um, some games and that there were a lot, a lot of things that were bigger than baseball going on. So um, in a way, um, the pandemic has really kind of been a blessing in disguise for me because it's allowed me um, some time to reflect and, uh, and really um, think about what's important to me. Time for a couple more questions here. Rich Dubroff, go ahead. Hey, Chris, you're the player, you're the player rep. Uh, how, how would you describe the owner player relationship right now? How many words do I get? It's, I mean, as many as you, as many, divisive. I mean, there is a lot of division between players and owners right now. And it's obvious. I mean, it's obvious in the media. It's obvious um, in almost everything that you read. And it's, it's frustrating as a veteran player, because I feel like um, our game could be in such a better place than it's in right now. But the only way for that to happen is for both sides to come together. And it, there's got to be some give and take from both sides. Um, will that happen? I don't know. Only time will tell. Melanie Newman, you're up. 
Chris, you spoke a moment ago about working to continue to find positives, even in frustration, and especially with the confines of 2020, there's a huge spotlight right now on mental health for players and the fact that they couldn't be afforded the usual getaways from the game that they used to have without COVID. Um, so just where, where do you find those positives when you're really trying to, you know, focus on resetting yourself? That's a great question. And I really appreciate you bringing that up because I think that's something that um, really needs to be talked about more. Uh, when, when I read the story about Drew, um, I mean, I was in tears. I, I could not believe that this guy was going through that. And, and then Angleton comes out and it's like, you know, what are we doing here? It's, there have to be more conversations about things like that for there to be any sort of progress or any sort of solution. And um, for me personally, man, I've got a great wife. I've got um, three beautiful girls. I've got a lot of people who love and support me and have always been um, there for me, always been there to, um, to encourage me. And, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I've had a lot of really great teammates, a lot of really great coaches, just a lot of really great people in the organization around me that have continued to support me despite um, you know, the struggles or whatever I was going through. And I, and I will forever, forever be grateful to those people. Final question goes to John Mioli. Chris, sorry to bring it back to baseball, but given the limited capacity at Ed Smith um, and the fact that some of these games might not be broadcast, a lot of people who might be interested in exactly what you've done to your swing might not be able to see it with their own eyes. Is there anything you could share for those Just people? Just asking who, the same question Jerry asked. You, you bet gonna, I am. I'm not going to give it all away. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to look different. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you.